Chapter 9, Study Guide, page 6. In the last video, we talked about the first part of the story of cellular respiration, breaking down a glucose molecule into two pyruvic acids. Well, in this part of the story, we have to um, actually get the pyruvic acid into the mitochondria, into the matrix of the mitochondria, and continue breaking it down through the Krebs cycle. Okay, well, we have to start by reviewing uh, glycolysis. We should probably take a look at what we're, what are the different parts of this diagram. What are we looking at? Out here is the cytoplasm of the cell. This is the outer membrane of this of the mitochondria. This is the inner membrane of the mitochondria, the squiggly one. And then this is the very inside of the mitochondria, which we call the matrix. All right. So this does look familiar over here. The process of glycolysis, splitting the glucose into two pyruvic acids, that doesn't happen in the mitochondria. It happens out here in the cytoplasm. So just for review, we'll say glucose, pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid. We said in summary, you have to put two ATPs in to this process, this pathway, and you get four ATPs out. We also said you need to remove some electrons. So you take your two NADs and you strip some electrons off of something here. Two NADH. A little box around that. There. Now, <coughs> we have to follow one of these pyruvic acids into the mitochondria. So just remember, everything we say about this pyruvic acid will also be true of this pyruvic acid. So we have to multiply everything we say by two. But we'll just follow one right now. This pyruvic acid enters the mitochondria, probably by facilitated diffusion. And as it comes in, it loses one of its carbons. Boom. That goes off as carbon dioxide and you ultimately breathe that out when you exhale. What's left is a two-carbon two, uh, two molecule here known as acetyl. The acetyl combines with an enzyme called coenzyme A. And the enzyme and the acetyl together sometimes referred to as an acetyl coenzyme A complex. Now what the what the enzyme, what the coenzyme A is going to do is it's going to help this two carbon acetyl connect with this four carbon molecule down here. This is called oxaloacetate. The oxaloacetate and the acetyl come together with the help of coenzyme A to make something called citrate, sometimes called citric acid. You can see the four oxaloacetate carbons there and the two acetyl carbons there for the six carbon citrate. As is true with enzymes, once coenzyme A helps to make that happen, it's released and you could imagine that it's going to go back and help the next time it encounters an acetyl. Well, the idea here now is to break the rest of this acetyl down and get the energy out of it and get some electrons out of it. So there's a uh, circular or cyclic pathway here called the Krebs cycle.
And by the time the Krebs cycle is over, the acetyl will be completely broken down. And we'll have some ATP and we'll have some more electrons stripped. So you can see as we go through a series of pathways here, another carbon is lost to carbon dioxide. Got now a five carbon molecule. As we go through a series of pathways here, another carbon is the final carbon from the acetyl is lost to carbon dioxide, and we regenerate oxaloacetate. And you might say, well, what's the sense of that? I don't, we're right back where we started. Well, in this process, um, you can rephosphorylate a an ADP into an ATP. That's one good thing. And also, along the way, we have loaded up some NAD with electrons. For example, right in here, in order for this pathway to occur, or during this pathway, two electrons are picked up. So we get another NADH here. Also, um, in the Krebs cycle, three NAD per pyruvic acid get pick up electrons and become three NADHs. To make a little correction here, okay? This is actually one over here, one per pyruvate which means when the second pyruvic acid comes through, it will be another one. So anyway, let's continue. There's another molecule that picks up electrons. We, similar to NAD, it's called FAD. But when FAD picks up electrons, it can carry more. So we'll have an FAD picking up electrons here, and it'll become FADH2. So you can see here that <coughs> there are several places so far that we've picked up electrons here, 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 and here. Now, if you get the total number of molecules that are involved here, you have to double everything by two because we said when one pyruvic acid comes in, one NAD is picks up electrons here, one CO2 is given off here, one CO2 is given off here, we say that three NADs pick up electrons here and one FAD here. But when the next one comes through, it's going to do the same thing. So if we were keeping track of what goes into and out of this story, you'd say, well, we're going to put two pyruvic acids in. And each one will give off three carbon dioxide molecules, which results in six CO2. We put, we're just going to consider inside the mitochondria here, we have three NADs here plus times two, and this one over here times two. So really, we put eight NADs into this, four for each pyruvic acid, and we were able to then reduce them into four NADHs. Per pyruvic acid, we were able to um, charge up two FADs, I mean one FAD, so total, we were able to make two FADH2s. And per pyruvic acid, we rephosphorylated one ADP. So we have a total of two ADPs here being rephosphorylated into two ATPs. I know that the coefficients here, the numbers are a little confusing. <coughs> I'm just trying to show you that. The numbers on here represent what happens per pyruvic acid. But when you break a glucose down, you get two pyruvic acids. So you have to multiply everything in here by two. Now, the last thing we, I like to do when I look at this is say, what was the initial 
electron donor? Where were the electrons at the beginning of this story? And we'll say, well, the electron donor at the beginning of this story was pyruvic acid. That's where the electrons were when we started this story. Any electrons that were lost, where did they end up? What was the electron acceptor? That's going to be NAD and FAD. That's where the electrons went. That was the electron acceptor if any of them were lost. All right, now we have to continue our story by talking about the electron transport system, which is on the next page.